Of all the features in the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center, the audit logging is definitely one of my top favorites by far. It's very powerful, very detailed. There are some catches to this, so follow me as I walk you through how to access this thing, what you need to know to find that data, and how to get started. So to get to where these audit logs are, we're going to be going into the Compliance Center, also known as Purview. The first place we need to go to is the M365 Admin Center. So we're going to go to admin.microsoft.com. Once you're here, if you don't see the Compliance Center, you can click on Show All, and then you'll see Compliance down here. And now if you don't see that option or you can't get access to the Compliance Center, then you need to be aware of the permissions required. You're going to need to have the view only audit logs or the audit logs role in Exchange Online to search the audit log. By default, these roles are assigned to the Compliance Management and Organization Management role groups on the permission page in the Exchange Admin Center. Global admins are automatically added to that because global admins have access to everything. If you wanna give someone just the bare minimum rights to search those audit logs, then you need to give them a custom role group that has the view only audit logs or audit logs role. That's the minimum permission required to be able to search these logs. So once you're in purview, you can go down to solutions and click on audit. This is how we're gonna be searching our audit log data. Now you may not see all of these options enabled because auditing may not be turned on in your tenant if so, you're going to see something that looks like this. And so you can just click on start recording user and admin activity. Wait about an hour and then all of this will be enabled for you. As an alternative, you could use the Exchange Online PowerShell and use this command to turn on auditing. Now, there's a lot of nuances to this interface and what you have to remember. So stick with me as I cover all these different ones. So to start with, the date range options you have, you could select up to a 90 day window, but you'll get an error if you try and search any window greater than that. So make sure it's 90 days or less that you're searching for. There's also a limit of 50,000 records per search. So if you have 50,000 exactly, then you likely have more records. It's just that you need to reissue your search with a little bit more criteria to show all of the audited activities. Also, audited activities by a user, like opening files, accessing sites, things like that, are stored for up to a year by default only for E5 licenses. If you have an E3, for example, it's only stored up to 90 days. So the longer audited histories for users is a benefit of the E5 license. As a test, let's pick uh, the beginning of the month through today, the day of recording. Next, we're gonna go to the activities. So by default, this is going to show you all activity regardless of what service or platform it occurred on. You do have nice grouping features here for file and page activities, sharing related things, but notice you've got things other than SharePoint in here. You've got Power BI, and in fact, here's a whole list of services that are audited and available for view through Purview's audit log. I'm gonna leave this completely unselected so I could see all the activities, because I'm gonna go in here to the file folder or site option, and I'm going to put in the site I want information on. Now, if you specify an address like this with no wildcard or asterisk, then what's going to happen is it's going to report on the site object itself. So those would be activities like adding and removing users from groups. What I really want to do is I want to add a slash and an asterisk so I can see all the activity anywhere inside the site. I don't need to specify a user to find their particular activity. If I did want to filter by users, I could click in here and it's a people lookup field. So I could just type in Adele's name, for instance, and include her, or I could add other users as well. There's a workload that really breaks down what products or features you're trying to find information on. For example, uh, you could even pick the compliance center and find out who's been looking at audit logs. You can filter by exchange, like I said, there's a lot of products here. I can pick SharePoint right here, uh, but since I've already specified a particular site, it'll pretty much narrow it down to SharePoint anyway. Similarly, the record type will filter by the audit log record type, so what type of activity was captured. The last thing I'm gonna do on here is give this search a name just so I can find it in my search history down here. So I'll type in Toso Portal Audit June and click on search and you'll see that the search is down here and the job status is queued it's going to take a little while for this to come back with results you can see my previous results here and they they definitely took a, a handful of minutes to pull out everything 
even this one for 34,000, almost 35,000 records. And while we're waiting on this, if this is the kind of content that you're looking for, you're trying to find out more about SharePoint and Microsoft 365, consider subscribing to the channel. I typically post once a week and I've started to do shorts during the week as well. Another tip, you just say file in here so you can type in the full path to a particular file in SharePoint, OneDrive for instance, and find out all of the activities that have related to that particular file. So if you're trying to hunt down who's accessed a potentially sensitive file that got put somewhere, this is an easy way to do that. Another tip about the 50,000 results limit is that if you have exactly 50,000, like I said, you're gonna to need to refine your query a little bit because the results are gonna be unsorted. So there's no guarantee that those results are gonna be in chronological order or anything like that. So you'll see here that the search is finished, it's completed, we have 887 rows. So we can click on this and start to look at the results. Now these are gonna be, you know, batched into, looks like 300 items. And if you scroll down, it'll start fetching the additional batches. So you could view all of your results here. You could filter by columns. You can export this. And you've got filters that you can use to narrow things down here as well. So if you look down through here, you'll see all of the activity that's happened on this site. Somebody modified site pages, they've accessed the policies and procedures library and actually opened up a particular file here. So you, and you also see it here, the activities accessed file. You'll see all the activities that have happened for that particular period of time. And if you click on one of these records, you'll see a lot more detail here. So this is a fantastic tool to be aware of. If you need something that goes beyond the version history of a particular file or page, for example, and you need lots of data and a total view of what's happening in your tenant, the audit logs are the place to go. And if you're trying to learn more about SharePoint's version control, check out this video right here talking about all the reasons why it's awesome. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what features of the Compliance Center you want to learn more about.